For the second time in seven days, the Prime Minister and the Chancellor have cancelled their plans and rushed to the Midlands to deal with the Longbridge crisis, not what they'd want in the middle of an election campaign. A short while ago, Mr Blair announced a £150 million package to help workers and the area. Um, there's no point in me trying to pretend that we can put together some magic deal to, to, to get another company to come in and, and take it over. If we could do it, believe me, we would have done it. Um, we weren't able to do that. What we can do now is do our level best for people for the future and to protect them through a period that's going to be very, very um, anxious and, and, and very, very worrying. Few in Longbridge are thinking about the election. The three biggest parties have stopped campaigning here. Indeed, the opposition are treating this more like a natural disaster than a political opportunity. But will the collapse of Rover affect the general election result? When seats in the Midlands change hands, governments can fall. Longbridge is in the Birmingham Northfield constituency. It used to be Conservative until 1992, when it narrowly went Labour. Round and about, there are seven marginal Labour seats. But the Conservatives are playing this very carefully indeed. So was Michael Howard meeting war veterans in Kent. He said he was surprised the government hadn't got involved earlier, but his main concern was for the workers of the plant. It's a terrible blow to them, to their families, and also to uh, the people who've worked in the dealerships, who work in the suppliers of components. This is going to have, I'm afraid, very deep and far-reaching consequences, and it's a tragic day for thousands of workers and their families. Charles Kennedy, who's in Cornwall, wants to find out what went wrong. There will have to be a proper inquiry into the whole background as to how this situation sunk uh, the way in which it did. The government's role, uh, but also, of course, the director's role. Just after the news broke, Mr Blair was on Radio 2, where he was challenged by a worker at the plant. We've got quality cars, and we've come through Engine Rover, and we're proud to work for Engine Rover. Why can't we, we not take it back as being a state-owned government? I don't think nationalising it is going to be the answer, Phil. And I think it would, be a, it would just be a, a deception on people to say that, that if we nationalised the company, we were going to be able to run it ourselves. I'm sorry. The Socialist Party has called for nationalisation, but no mainstream party thinks the plant should be rescued using taxpayers' money. So any criticism of Mr Blair is likely to be muted. However much money the government gives, the effects will ripple out from Longbridge throughout the region, indeed throughout the country. Think of all the suppliers and rover dealers like this one. And whilst it's not an unbreakable political rule, it tends to be when the economy takes a knock, so does the government. Mark Mardell, BBC News, Central London. Uh, I think it's particularly devastating since five years ago when we, when we rescued this company from BMW's liquidation process. And most people <laughs> gave us 14 months. Um, the employees, the management here, um, they've worked. they worked so hard. Um, and to get to the point where five years later, not 14 months later, five years later, we stop at the final hurdle. That's devastating. Now, they're walking away with virtually nothing. You're obviously walking away with a fortune. What would you say about that? Well, what we're trying to do is to place a, a fortune um, into the benefit of all of the employees, the employees and their, and their families and dependents. We've, we've launched today the, the Employee Trust, which uh, Carl Chin and Nigel Petrie and the Bishop for Birmingham have agreed to be trustees for. Um, that's got gross assets in excess of 50 million pounds. There, there are clearly um, creditors to pay, but very few. That there are also perhaps people from MG Rover Group's creditors who will try to attack that, the, those assets. But I'm very confident that we'll actually have millions of pounds available for those employees but to help them through that difficult period. There's going to be a lot of anger towards yourself and other members of the so-called Phoenix Four. What do you say about that? We don't see the anger here. We see the anger in the press. We see exciting and, and quite amazing stories in the press about um, you know, so-called millions of pounds. We, what we see here is um, a realization on the part of the employees that we have put our personal assets at risk in, in managing this business through five years. We have put a lot of hard work into that process. Um, and yes, we've, we've received rewards for that, but we, we don't see that anger reflected in Longbridge. Do you feel guilty in any way, the way things have been uh, handled? I feel devastated about the fact that we have, um, we have been stopped at this final hurdle. Um, 
I don't feel guilty about the process that we've been through. Wind the clock five years back and I'd have done the same. Uh, so really you wouldn't have done anything differently if you were back in 2000? Absolutely not. There's a lot of criticism that you really haven't been around in the last uh, few weeks uh, uh, while things have been effectively hotting up. Uh, what would you say to that? Well, that criticism again seems to come from people who don't really know what the facts are. Um, I think if you talk to the guys here um, to understand how many hours a day when we've been here we've been working and then of course there was the trip to Shanghai as well where it was uh, we gained the ability to uh, have about two hours sleep each night and then get on with the process. Crisis management is the last thing a government wants during an election campaign. Tony Blair and Gordon Brown were forced to rush to Birmingham yesterday to deal with the threat to thousands of jobs in the Midlands. Election campaigning has been suspended locally, but today the Prime Minister was stressing that his government's support for the Rover buyout five years ago had helped to cushion the blow this week. You know, when, when I was talking to um, the various stakeholders on the task force yesterday, that they, were, they were saying how actually the five years has in fact given us the opportunity to diversify a lot of the supply, and so the effect on suppliers has not been nearly as serious as otherwise it would be. But the closure of this automotive icon is hard for many to take, and the Prime Minister was asked how he would help those losing their jobs. By retraining them, by making sure that we give them each a special... <laughs> so, get, get, getting, giving them each a special advisor, and also we're going to open up a new industrial park on the site of Longbury. And we're going to put money into extra apprenticeships as well in the area. So there's a lot we're going to do. Okay. Rover is an election issue, but not the main one, it seems. Cleaner hospitals was Michael Howard's rallying cry in Folkestone today. But the Conservatives do want an inquiry into why Rover collapsed. The government did get involved. Um, Gordon Brown went to China, uh, but they got involved just in the last few weeks. Um, they must have known that there was a deal in the offing, that um, there were ways in which they could help that deal, presumably. Otherwise, uh, Mr. Brown wouldn't have gone to China and talked about it. And it seems surprising to me that they didn't uh, intervene to do whatever they could have done at a much earlier stage. Well, if the students were to for us, then we would win. Yes. The Liberal Democrats wanted to focus on education, but they too believe an inquiry may now be the best way to learn about what went wrong at Rover. There is a wider issue going beyond the narrow DTR inquiry into how this whole problem arose and indeed what happened with the government's proposal to raise £100 million to save the company at the last minute that apparently was completely contrary to the advice of officials who said this was not a proper use of public money and we certainly do need to investigate what happened. Economic stability is the central pillar of Labour's campaign and the conventional political wisdom is that governments are punished when the economy takes a knock. But Rover's demise had been on the cards for some time, and all the parties are still watching to see just what the political fallout will be. Richard Lister, BBC News.